Hello, and welcome to Vestiges of History. If you're new here, my name is Dylan, and I hope to earn your interest and subscription with the story I'm about to share with you today. And if you're joining me again for another story, welcome back. I hope you're having a glorious day. Today, we have a story that is very personal to me, and it's a story of a young man lost to war, and his legacy has touched on mine in the most permanent of ways. So join me as I introduce you to Captain Thomas Wright Capps. So as we usually do, we have an object, a vestige of that person's life, and we let the object speak for them. So what we see is an officer's service coat in a chocolate brown wool with some adornments that will inform us as to the service history of Tommy Caps. Starting at the top, there are captain's bars on the shoulder epaulets. And on the left shoulder, we see the shoulder sleeve insignia of the Army Air Forces. And on the right shoulder is the shoulder sleeve insignia for the 15th Air Force. Over the right breast pocket, a distinguished unit citation with an oak leaf cluster. And finally, over the left breast pocket, we see pilot's qualification wings, the air medal with an oak leaf cluster, and the European, African, and Middle Eastern campaign medal with four campaign stars. So Cap saw some lengthy service in the 15th Air Force. So who is this Captain Thomas Capps? Thomas Wright Capps was born on 17 February 1921 in Brantley, Crenshaw County, Alabama. His parents were Yancey Webster Capps and Maddie May. Yancey served in the U.S. Army in World War I and later attended college and worked as a teacher and school administrator in Laverne, Alabama in the 1920s and 30s, and then worked as a merchant later on in life. Maddie May Capps was a homemaker and raised Thomas and his younger sister, Frances Zuline, who was born in 1925. Tommy attended Auburn University in Alabama in 1940 and 1941, roll tide, in <laughs> which I don't think that's the, proper, the appropriate college, but whatever, Alabama. <laughs> um, on 26 September of 1941, before Pearl Harbor, Capps enlisted in the Army Air Corps as an aviation cadet with two years of college under his belt. He graduated from Air Corps Advanced Flying School at Moorefield, Texas on 29 April of 1942 as part of Class 42D. Capps was commissioned as an officer the next day. Shortly thereafter, he was transferred to Hamilton Field in California to train with the 4th Air Force on the new AT-6 Texan and later the P-38 Interceptor, or the P-38 Lightning. Before leaving for overseas service, Tommy Capps married Jesse Kirk on 8 August 1942. Jesse received her Bachelor's of Science in Teaching from the State Teachers School in Troy, Alabama. In the autumn of 1942, his new home, the 96th Fighter Squadron, and its brand new P-38s flew to Northern Ireland and received further training while attached to the 8th Air Force. A month following the Allied invasion of North Africa, the 96 was sent to Algeria to join the 12th Air Force. The squadron flew anti-submarine patrols and bomber escort missions and it attacked enemy shipping and airfields, moving its base east through Algeria and Tunisia following the Allied advance. As the North African campaign drew to a close, the squadron and caps began attacking targets in Italy earning a Distinguished Unit Citation for its actions on 25 April of 1943 during an attack on enemy airfields in Foggia. In September of 1943, the squadron participated in Operation Husky, the invasion of Sicily, and it was awarded a second Distinguished Unit Citation for bomber escort missions against marshalling yards near Naples. The squadron moved to Italy where it joined the 15th Air Force as part of the buildup to provide fighter cover for the 15th's heavy bombers as the Allies began punching at the soft underbelly of Fortress Europe. On the sorties, Lieutenant Capps flew his P-38, named Going Jesse, after his wife. Two missions that Capps recalled for a paper back home were the raids on the rail yards in Sofia, Bulgaria, and the rail yards at Nish, Yugoslavia, where Capps strafed and bombed Axis supply trains, and he also remembers his share of the invasion of Salerno, Italy, providing fire cover for American troops landing on the boot around the clock. Can you imagine being 22, 23 years old and you have the responsibility of one being an operations officer, which means that you are planning these missions, that you are working with intelligence and maps and cartographers and the meteorologists 
and you're, and you're working with the bomber groups and coordinating all this, and then you're presenting all this to the pilots minutes before they go off into the, into the air, that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of intense thought. And then you have to get into a plane yourself. And in a lot of cases, he's the flight leader. So he is the first plane and he's in radio communication with all of his buddies. And he's directing them and he's taking information from them. He's making sure they're paying attention. He's making sure that everything is working as planned. He's 23 years old. Caps was with the 96th from before the squadron transferred from California. Tommy was later promoted to assistant operations officer of the 96th as well as the entire 82nd fighter group. He flew missions over Italy, Greece, Albania, Yugoslavia, and Bulgaria with his 50th mission over Verona, Italy on the 22nd of March, 1944. After completing 50 combat missions and nearly 20 months overseas, Caps was diagnosed with operational fatigue and was rotated back to the States for rehabilitation and to train newer pilots as a seasoned air combat veteran. He arrived back in the U.S. on 17 April 1944. He received therapy and rehabilitation at the Army Air Force's Convalescent Center at Don Cesar Place in St. Petersburg, Florida. Jesse stayed by his side from that point on, and in July of 1944, he was assigned to Santa Rosa Army Air Base as a training aids officer and a P-38 instructor. He and Jesse drove across the country together from Florida to California. On 24 March 1945, Captain Capps was on a search and rescue mission north of Santa Rosa Army Airfield looking for a downed plane. He and his observer, 35-year-old Private Norbert John Riley of Lakewood, Ohio, were both killed when the BT-13 trainer that Capps was flying went down while caught in bad weather. Capps' father, Yancey, wrote the local American Legion to implore them for help in the search. Here are the Western Union telegrams between Jesse Capps and her in-laws and they remind her to have hope. The Army and the local authorities abandoned the search and rescue effort in May of that year, with the area being too densely forested and mountainous. They were presumed dead. Finally, on 19 August 1945, two deer hunters happened upon the crash site nearly seven months after the incident. On 29 August 1945, Capps was buried back home in Crenshaw County, Alabama. Tommy Capps was 24 years old. Jesse remarried after the war and passed away 6 June 2012 and is interred at Oak Hill Cemetery, Prattville, Alabama, after teaching in the Montgomery Public School System for over 30 years. She had no children. This one is significant to me and personal to me for many reasons. One is that on April 1st of 2022, I attempted to get to the crash site but never made it, which changed my life forever. And there will be more on that specifically in another separate video. The other is that I was 24 when I began researching Tommy Caps nearly seven years ago. Seven years of pulling threads and trying to put the pieces back together to tell this story. It's changed me as a person. There will be much more on Tommy Caps and his story. I owe it to myself to attempt to make it to the crash site again and document it. And if you're watching this and you beat me to it, please be respectful to the site and do not go souvenir hunting. Thank you for joining me today and remembering Captain Thomas W. Caps and his adventures and his all too short life. And remember, as always, you never know who will tell your story. Live a storied life.